Welcome, I'm Rob Froney and I'm about to demonstrate for you how to make your own footprint in the uh, KiCAD uh, EE schema. So right here we have our attenuator that we've been working on and this particular BNC connector right here I was not able to find a footprint that would fit. Let me uh, just uh, show you what happened here. If I <coughs> type E for edit, notice that I don't have any data sheet on here. I really need a data sheet. Um, fortunately, I went online and I found a data sheet for this connector that I wish to use here. You can see it right here. It's a BNC connector from TE. And the important part for us right now is this is the footprint. These are the size of the holes that need to be drilled and how far apart they are. Notice this is 6.6 .6 millimeters here, this is 6.6 .6 millimeters there, and this thing, the hole is right in the middle. The hole in the middle is 1.17 millimeters in diameter, and the outside holes are 2.11 millimeters in diameter. So that's what we're looking for, a pad like that. So I copied this URL, I'm going to paste this URL into the data sheet field right here so that we have the data sheet. Now I'm going to go up here to the footprint and let's just browse footprints and see what we can find. So if you go over here and you look at connectors, there are some BNC connectors in connectors, like here's a BNC. Ah, uh, that's not the right kind of connector for what I'm looking for. This one looks better, BNC uh, uh, CI. Uh, this is actually looks pretty promising. So, but before we uh, go jumping into anything, Let's measure it here. Notice down here at the bottom there is this uh, d dx and dy and absolute x and absolute y. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at this dx, dy. If you put your cursor right in the center of one of these connectors and you push the space bar, I just push the space bar, and when you do that it makes dx and dy go to zero. So now I'm going to move my cursor over here and as you notice as I move it, the dx um, change to 5.08. Uh-oh, I wanted 6.6. .6. It's only 5.08. So this connector, this footprint is not not right for our connector. And I wasn't able to find any anywhere else, so I'm going to ditch this. I'm going to say OK to save that data sheet there, but now we need to go make our own uh, footprint for this connector. So up here, this is the footprint editor right here. Let's click that guy, and it will open up the footprint editor. We need to make a new footprint, so we click this guy and do new footprint, and this footprint I'm going to call TE underscore BNC, because it's a TE BNC. And uh, I found that for many footprints, this wizard is really good. So let me just show you the wizard. This one doesn't turn out to be something that I really am very excited about using the wizard on. It's much easier to do it without. But let me just show you the wizard. You can see the wizard because sometimes it's handy. So if you click the wizard, here's the wizard, and if you click this little guy again, this little thing, it will select a wizard script. So you push on this um, tab right here, available footprint generators, and there's all kinds of them here, like for example, here's one for uh, single or dual out out, uh, inline packages like DIPs, DIPs, you know, old-fashioned ICs. So if we do that, we can look and see. We'll just see what it looks like. Oh yeah, there's a DIP. You can change things up here, like uh, if I want 6-pin uh, instead of 24-pin, uh, there I've got 6-pin. And, uh, you know, you can change a bunch of other parameters. Well. That's not what I want. Uh, normally, if I wanted to keep this, I'd push this little button here and export it to the, the footprint to the editor. But I don't want to do this. I was just showing you this nice little wizard. So I'm just going to close it out here. And we're going to make our own uh, little thing right here, our own little uh, footprint by adding pads. So I'm going to add a pad here. I'm just going to put it anywhere. I'm going to hit Escape because I want to edit this pad. This pad number one uh, is, is going to be for the center conductor. We said it was 1.17 millimeters in diameter on the hole, and if the hole is 1.17, I probably want something more like 2 millimeters for the size of the thing. And I, oops, I forgot to put the position. So, E, the position. I want it at 0, 0, right in the middle. So, 0, 0. So, let's do that. And um, 
uh, it looks like pretty good other than that, so that's good. So now I'd like to make another new pad out here for for uh, for number two, which is if you look at uh, our schematic, junction two is ground, junction one is the center, pin one is the center, pin two is ground. So I'm going to make four pin two connectors, kind of like that we saw in the library there. So go back here. I'm going to put another one here. Well, no, I'm going to I'm going to edit this one first. So I'm going to go uh, t hover over it and type E. Two is right. I want this to be at position 3.3 millimeters and minus 3.3 millimeters. And we need to make this 2.11 millimeters in diameter. And I probably better make this about, say, maybe two mil uh, three millimeters so that I can have a little bit outside that for the copper. I'm going to say that's good. Okay, so I'm going to put another one, and and if you it, it will just use your last one except it increments the number here. So I'm just going to put this down here. I'm going to put another one over here, and they aren't quite right, you know, but somewhere. So I'm going to just edit this one. I'm going to make it pin number two. I'm going to make it 3.3 .3 and 3.3. .3 a negative and uh, all the other stuff looks right so I'm gonna say okay so that one looks okay why is this one okay let me edit this one real oh, this one needs to be 0.3 here I didn't get that right okay so that'll move that guy up now we do this one edit this one I want that pad number two I want this to be minus 3.3 .3, and I want this guy to be 3.3 .3. and then we'll say okay that looks good so let's edit this one. I want that pad two. I want to make this 3.3 .3 and make this guy 3.3. .3. And I'm going to say OK. And that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to move this BNC text um, up here. And I'm going to move this reference number here. Type M to move it. I'm going to move it down here. And. <coughs> Then I'm going to make a new library, uh, create a new library, and save the current footprint in it. So I click this. It's going to put this in the demo project folder. That's good. I'm going to call this demo project library. And uh, it will add the dot pretty that needs to be added on there. And then I'm going to go up here to the menu, and I'm going to add, with the library wizard, I'm going to add that, um, that library I just did. It's on my computer, so I say next. And then I have to go find it here, and it's in the uh, downloads directory. And it's in the pro demo project directory right here, and in the demo project directory, and there it is, the library. Once I click that, it, this little next appears, and I can do that. This looks good. Status OK. I'm going to push next. Now, I want to add this only to the current project, so it's only visible to this project. If I did the other one, everybody could use it, but uh, uh, I, I kind of prefer to have all the libraries for a specific project that I have to make myself in that project. I will copy this to another project directory if I if I need it again, and if I do that, then when I, I zip up the project or compress the project, it will have the libraries that it needs. If if I do it, leave it here in this project directory, and I zip up the other ones, it won't I won't grab those. I don't think so. I'm 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 just kind of doing it this way. I kind of like it doing it this way. Okay, so now. Um, We've saved the thing. I'm going to say good. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to exit without save because I just saved it. I know I did. And um, in here, we're going to add uh, that footprint. So I'm going to type E to add this footprint to this. I should be able to browse to the footprints. There should be a demo project library in here if I did everything right. And there it is. And it's a TEBNC that looks good. I'm going to double click on this TEBNC, and now I've got the right footprint. 
I'm going to delete this guy because it and and replace him with the copy of this guy because it's faster than editing it. So I'm going to copy, and I'm going to flip that, and then I do that. It was a Y that flipped it. Okay, so now we have uh, this guy right here. Notice it's already been annotated. Um, that has an R1, R3, R2. If you have question marks after that, you need to uh, do this uh, annotate thing and, and hit annotate. That puts all the um, numbers on it. The J question mark doesn't have an annotation, so I need to annotate again. So now we've got all the numbers on there. Let's double check and, and see if there's any problems with this thing with the the bug check here this will tell us if there are any obvious errors so we go run and oops there's a problem here it says there's a problem so you click on that and you can see there'll be a little arrow pointing to the problem and the problem said that there was a power here but nothing to drive it well normally a, a ground connection uh, requires being driven by an external ground in this case, this is kind of a passive BNC connector here, and that power, um, the, the connector, this being a ground being a power connector, is probably not really appropriate for this thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a power flag. If you go over here and click on the place power port, and you, and you uh, place a power port here. Okay. I've got some problems with my libraries I need to fix, but I haven't bothered doing that. Okay, so um, I want power flag, PWR, power flag. So this is going to generate a flag that, that says, this is okay. You know, this really is a power port. So I'm going to rotate, 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 and I'm going to stick him right in here. Click that on, and it junctioned it right on there. So now we do the, the bug check and everything's good no problems now okay so that looks pretty good we should probably add some text and say that this is a uh, 6 db attenuator um, and that's probably good enough and then we'll place that say right here and it would be nice to, uh, sometimes it's nice to draw a box around the part of the circuit that's all the 6 dB attenuator or whatever this stage is. Um, just kind of click around here. Um, I think I really need it down a little lower. Get onto that ground, and then I can click this, and then zoom in here, and I want to make it go to that point right there. You double click to end. Okay, so now we can zoom out and look at that. Yeah, that looks a little nicer. We have our inputs on the left and our outputs on the right. Actually, an attenuator is symmetrical, but yeah, it's the best you can do when it's symmetrical. Um, and, you know, generally I would advise looking this over and trying to make sure everything is good. But once you're pretty sure everything's good, then it's time to make a net list. So you click on this net list, and, and notice uh, if, if we had an associated footprints with everything, like if we look at, uh, right click on this, and we look at uh, um, you know, the properties, we can look at the edit the properties, or type E there. And um, if you look at, uh, we've got already all the footprints, and all the parts have footprints, so it should be good. So if we just click on this net list, it will generate a net list, which will include all the footprints, and uh, we'll save this, and now we have a demo project net list. And the next stage for this would be to uh, uh, click on PCB new here, import the net list, and start laying the circuit out. I'm going to leave that for uh, a later video because this is a good time to end this video and uh, you guys can, uh, can watch that other video if you want to learn how to do that. It's probably a good idea to save this as, uh, since we're at this point. Thank you for watching.